The opinions expressed in the following program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers or Rogers TV. Welcome to Health Matters. I'm your host this evening, Dr. Lana Marconi. On tonight's show, we're going to explore acts of good health. Basically, I'm going to ask my guests what they do for good health, and hopefully we can all learn vicariously through them some new healthy choices to incorporate into our own lives. Before I introduce my first guest, I need to reveal the results of last week's poll question. Here was your question. Do you believe in angels? According to the results, 83% said yes and 17% said no. Thank you for voting. I have a new poll question for you. Here it is. How are you most likely to relieve stress through laughter, alcohol, eating food, sex, meditation, or exercise? Let us know at rogerstv.com slash health matters. And now my guest. My first guest is a chiropractor. Her name is Dr. Nancy Karenik. Also joining us in studio is Mr. Gordon Depp, singer and songwriter from the Canadian band the spoons. Welcome, doctor and musician. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having us. How come us? music wasn't on that list? <laughs> things to really stress. So, Gordon, I understand you have a gift for our viewers this yes, evening. we're going to well, be giving away have... some of these to match you. And what is the name it's, of the CD? It's the Nova Heart 30th Anniversary, which is, um, there we go, can you see? Probably the song we're best known for, and it came about uh, roughly 30 years ago, and this is sort of a commemorative package. Nice. Different versions, including live, yeah. and the original demo, which is Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you. Folks at home, if you'd like a copy of this CD, we have five that we're giving away. And actually, you'll need to email me. Here's the e email address, giveaway at drlana.com. I'm taking the first five emails. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what do you do for your health, Gordon? I, I just live a clean life, and just naturally. I don't need to put much effort into it. People expect that because you're a musician, you're going to lead a really unhealthy life You know, when it comes to everything from drugs to even your diet and your and the exercise you maybe don't get but no I have a very boring clean life <laughs> <laughs> so I tell people I say, how, how do you stay you know good health I say well you got to expect to be a little bit boring with things but in the long run it pays off it pays off yeah. and I understand that you see a chiropractor this this, is this lady chiropractor. right here yes, yes yeah and why do you see her <laughs> you know there are a lot of music um, and performance related things, you know, especially in shoulder from playing guitar, mm -hmm. even the way you stand on stage sometimes can mess up your back, so that really helps. And, and how do you, you know, help musicians or athletes? Well, chiropractic care is uh, a great way to get healthy and stay healthy for a lifetime. And getting regular chiropractic adjustments allows your body to function um, at its very best at every, on every level. So what I do is as a chiropractor, I clear out the spine of, of subluxations. I clear out the spine and the nervous system of subluxations, which actually can limit human potential. And I get to work with all kinds of great and cool people like rock stars <laughs> and uh, musicians and athletes and pro athletes and pregnant women and kids. It's chiropractic care is really um, for everyone and anyone that really wants to live uh, their life at a, at a higher function. Nice. Gordon, um, I go to LA a lot. There's a radio station there, and they have a show called Rockstar Health and Fitness. Really? It's a radio show. And the host, Lori Richard, she does yoga, but she inter interviews rock stars like the Follow mm -hmm. Follow Boys. Mm -hmm. And um, the drummer said that uh, when he's on the road, he runs, he does push ups, does pull ups, yeah, yeah. Uh, strength training, anything that like that. doesn't interest me at all. I'm, I Nothing. hate running. You know, yoga is the only thing. <laughs> yoga. Yeah, I mean, kind of like Sting, you know, <laughs> for anybody from our generation that kind of, he was actually instrumental. A lot of things happened with the spoons, maybe that rubbed off, and yeah. he was sort of n not close friends. I knew him well enough, and that's it's inspired me a little bit, too. What's your favorite position in yoga? Oh, Staying I make up my own. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of had my own version. I mean, I do classes as well, but I, I can yeah. do it watching television. Yeah. You know, just not even thinking about it. Mm -hmm. you, know. do you, you do yoga, don't you? Absolutely. Yoga is a really great practice uh, that connects mind, body, and soul. It reduces stress, increases strength and flexibility, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it actually lowers the risks of uh, chronic diseases. So. Sure. How do you uh, stay healthy, though, on the road in terms of nutrition? Well, luckily, we don't go on the road as much as we used to yeah. in, in the old days. You know, now we keep it to a weekend or a week. Um, we just... We don't eat a lot of junk food. We don't. We try to avoid late night parties. I and mean, people expect afterwards you have to meet and greet people. We do that, but sure. you, 
you know, you keep the, the drinks and things for the guests and you stay away. Just everything in moderation. It's, it's a cliche, but it's true, you know. Yeah. Just uh, enjoy the same things you did back in the 80s, but just a little less of them. A little you know? less. Any uh, on the road tips for viewers? Happy? Absolutely. Actually, Mark Iron, or an Iron Man champion was Mark Allen, and his tips actually concur with what Gore just said. Mm -hmm. And it's just avoiding bad foods, and that's what we kind of tend to crave for. But you really need to stay away from them. Stay away from sugars, um, hydrogenated snacks, fried foods, and you really want to make better choices like salads and mm -hmm. healthy snacks. Sure. Um, you, you learn know. too over time what works and what doesn't. Like when you're yeah. younger. I'll have a chocolate bar. Not yeah. that it's bad for you, but now I realize I go to sleep. Like sugar puts yeah. me to sleep, mm -hmm. so I, I have to avoid it, especially before a show. Totally. Things like that, you know. And drinking, you know, plenty of water yeah. as well. Sure. Let's talk about the voice because you use your voice a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, the sound of the voice is created by small internal muscle movements that need to be hydrated <laughs> um, in order to create peak peak performance, right? Yeah. Peak energy, peak mm -hmm. uh, flexibility, elasticity. Um, voice coaches say, and public speaking coaches say, to drink room temperature water before and during your performance and to avoid cold, hot, and even coffee because they can constrict or dehydrate mm. or irritate your throat. And they also say to avoid dairy because that'll create phlegm. Yes. Um, what type of nutrition do you feed your voice? That I really don't think about don't it. Think but you're right about dairy type things. <clears throat> Beer is a bad thing for the vocal cords. It gums it up. You mm -hmm. know, w Warm water, you're right. You know, sometimes I'll, sometimes I'll put a bottle of ice cold water on stage. It's, it's like a shock to your vocal cords. So, but at the same time, I hear things like greasy potato chips are good. People like Mariah Carey will go in the studio and eat bags of chips just to lubricate their... <laughs> maybe they like chips too. I guess you could <laughs> use olive oil or something. But there are certain things which may sound bad for you, but they're good for the vocal cords. Good for the vocal cords? Anything for sound? Any um, staples people should be taking? Well, as far as nutrition goes, it's not really for the voice, but I, what yeah. I do recommend all patients, kind of just having a good um, whole food multivitamin, uh, taking vitamin D, a good fish oil or krill oil preferably, and a probiotic just for gut health. So, I mean, those are just staples that everybody should should be taking. Sure. Gordon, I was watching a YouTube video, an interview of uh, Explore Music. The interviewer was Alan Cross, and you had mentioned you were, you majored in psychology. Mm -hmm. in university. Yes. I thought that was very interesting. Has psychology helped create your lyrics or it helped does, influence absolutely. your music at all? I had no intention of being a psychologist. Or any, but I kind of had parents that wanted me to go to university. Yeah. And that was the most interesting. And it does. I mean, our first albums, there's so many songs that came out of psychology classes or subjects. And as it turned out, I went to McMaster University. And luckily, Danny Lanois, who was a big producer, did U2. His studio was right nearby. Mm -hmm. So, that, I mean, it, that led to us working there. So. It, in many ways, it was a good move, but yeah, nice. I could go back to some of our songs saying this came from this class and this came from this study or, you know. Yeah, fantastic. Nice. I was also watching on YouTube um, your Static and Transmission um, CD. You did a release at Sunrise Music, I think in April 2011. Mm -hmm. You were actually inside the music store and you had these screaming fans. They were so excited well, to that's listen a, a, to you. That's a nation, national thing. It's called uh, Record Store Day. Yeah, And it's yeah. all over North America, oh, actually the world now. Uh -huh. And you get bands like the Foo Fighters and, and Radiohead doing the same thing. And they just appear in the store, yeah. like in the old days, like the monkeys would or the Beatles. And How amazing is that? Because what is it like to be you on the receiving end of all that positive energy being really tossed at you? I mean, these fans were glowing. I was watching them. That's one of the biggest factors in, in performing and maybe even good health or performing well yeah. is the energy you get from people. It's, it's like, the, I guess it's endorphins or something. When that buzz happens, I mean, I could think it kills germs. I think, I think it, it, it yeah. improves your, your immune system. It's, it's pretty powerful and stuff. It, absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, you, you carry yourself. When you're receiving good energy, um, you just carry yourself better. Your, your chest mm -hmm. is open. Your posture is nice and upright, opposed to the opposite where you're depressed or, or shut down. Everything gets shut down your chest. Sure. Gordon, you're, you have an upcoming gig. Yes. Well, there's a few in the area. No, yeah. November the 2nd at Hamilton Place. Mm -hmm. uh, November the 21st at the Living Arts Center in Mississauga. Actually, next week, October, to, or this week coming out, October 26th at uh, the Edelweiss in Kitchener, which mm -hmm. is like a dinner theater. And they're all with another 80s band called Images in Vogue, if anybody remembers them. They're pretty... Yeah. They're pretty good. Yeah. Just quickly, how do you prepare for a show? I mean, do you meditate beforehand? Do you have no. a shot of tequila? What do you do? No, no <laughs> nothing, nothing. I don't even warm up. I don't... I used to try to warm up. Somebody told me to do that. It just messed me up. Just I just walk on, start singing. Maybe sit with my guitar a little yeah. while, run through a few songs. But How no. do you deal with the stresses of being a rock star and fighting <laughs> off all those star. screaming ladies? First of all, I don't think of myself <laughs> as a rock star. Um, I get nervous before every show. Do you? Actually, the smaller, the more yeah. nervous. Big shows are very impersonal. It looks like a big field of 
heads of lettuce or something like this. You can't really discern people, but in a smaller room, it's a bit more nerve-wracking. Mm -hmm. But once you get up there and it's, it's going smoothly, it's great. Mm -hmm. You don't want to leave. And how is it like living the dream of a musician? I'm lucky. I'm a very lucky guy. You know? yeah. There's somebody wants, I know what the statistics are, maybe 2 3% of people in the business can make a living of it. And I'm, so I, can, wow. I never thought I'd be doing it this long. So Gordon Depp, thank you very much for joining us today thank in you. studio. Always a pleasure to see you at the clinic. And Dr. Nancy, you're going to take a quick hiatus, come back for segment five, and we'll hear about what's near and dear to your heart in terms of good health. We'll be back more on health matters and looking at people's acts of good health. Are you stressed? The Canadian Mental Health Association says that persistent stress affects us emotionally and intellectually, resulting in decreased concentration and memory, confusion, anxiety, irritability, loss of humor, and fear. Welcome back to Health Matters. I'm asking my guests tonight what their acts of good health are. Before I introduce my next guest, here is your poll question tonight one more time. How are you most likely to relieve stress through laughter, alcohol, eating food, sex, meditation, or exercise? Let us know, rogerstv.com slash health matters. And now my next guest, she's a chiropractor. Her name is Dr. Kimberly McCannuel. Welcome, Kimberly. Thank you very Welcome much back, I should say. You were here last time with me on the show. Yes. Um, always a pleasure. All right, what do you do for good health? Well, first off, I'm very lucky in the fact that I am a chiropractor, which means I do not need to sit at a desk nine to five. Uh, sitting is the new smoking. Mm -hmm. um, so staying active, anything I can do to get out and be active um, is something that's really important to me. Um, for instance, I recently got married. Mm -hmm. And for the honeymoon, instead of the traditional, I'm going to go lie on a beach and relax for two weeks, my husband and I took a trip to Peru and we hiked up to Machu Picchu. Wonderful. Okay, we have photos of your trip. Okay, so we're going to post some photos of our trip to Machu Picchu and you're going to tell me about your trip. Sure. Go ahead. Um, so we actually did what's called, yeah, there's Machu Picchu in the background. That's you. Yes, <laughs> that's me in the hat. Um, we did the Lars Trek, which is going up the back way, not the traditional Incan Trail. Mm -hmm. uh, you go to a higher elevation. Mm -hmm. We climbed to 4,665 meters above sea level. Wow. Um, yes. Wow. We, that's we hit huge. the snow. It was cold. Um, I was lucky that uh, I wasn't affected by altitude, but some of the other travelers were. I think we have another photo with that shows snow in yes. it. Yes. Does it? There so you go, the that's snow where you climbed, where the snow is? Um, that particular mountain we didn't go up to, but uh -huh. they, like this was just coming over another mountain that was at the 4,665 meters, and there was snow there. Sure. So we did walk across the snow a little bit. And, I mean, how intense was that? It was awesome, and it was very, very challenging. Um, let me say, my thighs and glutes have never looked better. At the end of that trip, all those up and down and up and down, yeah. it was pretty intense, but uh, it was really... Awesome, an amazing experience. And the altitude, I mean, I'm sure that affected your your ability to climb. Um, I definitely felt it more. Like when I would do a big hike up the top, I get to the top and I'd be breathing pretty heavy where mm -hmm. normally that's not something that's an issue for me. Mm -hmm. um, before I left kind of to train for it, when I was um, at the gym, they have this stair master, which is just like a set of stairs that keeps yeah. going around and around. Yeah. So I would practice on that um, and I could go pretty far without getting winded sure. versus putting a pack on and being at very high altitude. and hiking up a steep hill. So how many days is this, this, is this hike? It's a four day trek. So four days, and yes. you have to carry gear on your back? Um, minimum amount of gear. We do have porters that will take the, uh, most of the gear up for us, the tents and everything like that. Oh nice, so, so you have assistance. Yes, they take all the food and everything, <laughs> but we need, um, you go from first thing in the morning when it's freezing cold mm -hmm. to during the day when it warms up. Mm -hmm. So all of your layers uh, plus water. Mm -hmm. Water is a huge one that you have to carry mm -hmm. and any sort of snacks that you want to snack on mm -hmm. during the day. Mm -hmm. um, which once you take all those off and put them in your pack, it does get a little heavy. Sure. And what did the tour guide explain about Machu Picchu? I mean, what did you feel there? What was the energy like there? It really was an awesome experience. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing that I thought was really um, crazy taking away from it is if you look at that photo where Machu Picchu is in the background, yeah. When Machu Picchu was originally built, all the stones are granite. And when you cut granite, it's white. 
originally. So the entire city would have been this gleaming white city when it first was constructed. Yeah, I mean, I've always wanted to go to Machu Picchu, and so I'm glad you're here, because I've wanted to ask somebody who's been there this question. So I watch a lot of documentaries. Um, History Channel showed the construction of, of how Machu Picchu uh, was made. And the way that the stones were cut was with such precision that it's put together like a puzzle, and there's no mortar, like there's no glue, there's nothing holding these stones together, correct? Yeah. And in and, and some places you can't even put like a knife or a credit card through these stones. And the thing is, the Incas couldn't even write back then. So the question yeah. became, well, how did they come up with these advanced calculations and measurements to create this uh, advanced city and build the city? And then they had um, the um, irrigation system, and mm -hmm. they show, which still works today. And they said that if they didn't have the irrigation system built into Machu Picchu, it would actually, the city would slide off the mountain because of the rainfalls that yes. they get. So in the, in the History Channel, they said, they put forth the ancient astronaut theory, which proclaims that an alien civilization was responsible for building Machu Picchu and introducing <laughs> civilization to primitive man like the Incas. So my question okay. to you is, did your tour guide ever talk about the ancient <laughs> astronaut theory? Um, that was brought up, but he did say um, a lot of the, um, the ways that the place was put together yeah. were actually um, ideas and concepts taken from other cultures. Okay that you know, they brought over with them, bits and pieces. And there was one location we went to with ruin sites and they had three different forms of construction all in one site yeah. from three different cultures. Yeah. Um, so again, no aliens. No aliens, no. Uh, fantastic. Okay, so you brought, um, what did you bring? What is it? We're moving on to something else that you yes. do for good health. What is it? Um, so I train in Muay Thai kickboxing. Ooh, <laughs> which is, <laughs> should I be afraid? <laughs> be very afraid. Uh, yeah, Muay Thai, it's slightly different than your regular kickboxing. Okay. In okay. Uh, regular kickboxing, you punch and kick. Muay Thai, we add knees and elbows. Uh, so I brought along my pads and gloves so I can just show you kind of thing like the Shh. difference. Okay. So you slide. My hands through here? Yep, and there, and then grip. Like yeah, that? Grip. Oh. Fingers over top like that. Okay. Yep, and then that one there. Same thing, fingers over top, awesome. So, I'll show you just a quick example. What are you gonna do to me, Kim? <laughs> okay. I'll just show you a couple punches. I'm not actually gonna hit. I'll just kind of tap them in nice and light. Um, but Muay Thai yeah. is an awesome workout and an amazing stress right. reliever. So, so you're gonna hold the pads like up like this? this. Yes. Should I be wearing like a face guard or something? I will, I'm not going <laughs> to punch hard. I'm not going to punch hard. So generally, um, when we were practicing and stuff like that, we'd yeah. be sparring. Um, a jab. Yeah. A cross. Yeah. We do elbows. So we get you to turn that slightly so an elbow comes across like that. Um, so yeah, it's just like do again? a lot of combos. Wow, look at the definition in your arms. Do you uh, do weights? No. Actually, I do not do any weights. Um, uh, unfortunately, weights uh, don't entertain me. Yeah. Um, so all of the muscle definition, maybe a little Look at that. Gun show. Can there I feel? Go. Holy, that's pretty hard, Kim. Um, that's all from conditioning. Uh, so with the Muay Thai, mm. you can take these off. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with Muay Thai, um, and do you travel with these? Uh, no, no. I take my jump rope with me. Oh, I do. Okay. Um, but yes, with the Muay Thai, we do a lot of push-ups, a lot of sit-ups, a lot of squats, a lot of lunges. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of you know conditioning work, and that's how I build my muscle and maintain my muscle. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. What else do you do? Um, I'm also a fitness instructor. I teach a class called Body Combat at Good Life Gym, and it is a cardiovascular kickboxing class. It mixes in a bunch of different martial arts. Mm -hmm. um, so we have karate, Muay Thai. Tai Chi, Taekwondo, it mixes them all in and it's done to fantastic upbeat music. Um, and again, at the end of the class, there's more conditioning, so a lot more push-ups, sure. sit-ups, That's lunges, hardcore. What, um, so I'm sure like all this, the combat work and Muay Thai prepared you for your hike in Peru, did it not? Definitely. Yeah. Um, I'd say that courtesy of hitting up the gym as much as I did, I teach twice a week and then the Muay Thai was uh, once a week for an hour and a half. Um, definitely put me in a better position than the rest of my people in my group when mm -hmm. we were hiking. Um, I'd, I'd like to say that uh, it was the guide and then myself and then the rest of the group. <laughs> so it definitely prepared me. It, it really helped out um, for the whole hiking and being in peak physical, physical condition in order to do yeah. that challenge. Um, one of the, I spent some time in a dojo about two years doing a keto and one of the reasons why I liked a keto was because it's, it's a, it's the way of harmonizing with the universe that's a keto. And so you learn to go with your attackers 
energy and thereby taking control of the force that way as opposed to going against the person or attacking the person. And these body movements about going with the flow translate psychologically in terms of meeting life with no resistance and going with the flow of life um, so as to not create discomfort or dis-ease. Do these martial arts that you do translate into a psychology in terms of how you approach life? Um, like, it's not as philosophical <laughs> as what you did. Um, more or less, it's, it's stress relief. Yeah. Yeah, like, what's better than at the end of the day, you've had a horrible day going to class and just thinking, like, um, if, let's say, uh, somebody really ticked you off that day. Yeah. Just to take out that anger and frustration on a set of pads, you're not yeah. doing any damage, yeah. you're increasing your cardiovascular health, and you're just getting all that stress out. So when you go home to your husband, you've had a bad day, do you have him put on these pads? And <laughs> I should bring this to my therapy class so my clients can do this. Yes. <laughs> yes. Get out your anger. Yes. Right, okay, quickly, last minute tips for viewers at home who want to engage in good health practices. If you want to get active, start simple and start easy. Um, don't be like crazy, I'm, I'm going to hit up the gym five times a week. Start really simple. Like you, because you know. you're five, you're seven days, aren't you? Uh, no, I'm around three to five. Three to five depending on the week, but uh, yeah, start simple, go for a walk, you know, and then once you get used to going for a walk, speed up the walk a little, get the heart rate going, get your breath, uh, your respiratory rate increased, go from there, you can, you know, go to a couple classes at the gym nice. and take things easy, but always build on a slow scale. Thank you, thank you Dr. Kim for joining us tonight, we'll be back more on Health Matters and a look at what people do for good health, stay tuned. Want to manage stress? Learn to cue the relaxation response. One way to trigger this response is to enjoy life. For example, taking time to indulge in a favorite hobby is a great way to nurture yourself and reduce stress. Welcome back to Health Matters. I'm asking my guests tonight about their acts of good health. With me now is chiropractor Wendy Smith. Welcome, Dr. Wendy Smith. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome. So what do you do for your health? I play soccer. Okay. Can I run? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, there's a lot of running in soccer. <laughs> Actually, I read that some soccer players run up to five to seven miles in, yeah. in a given game. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Do you play professionally or is it just for fun? For fun. For fun. For fun. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and did you do something exciting this summer? I did. What did I, you do? I played for a team uh, from the Halton region. Okay. And we went to Italy for the World Masters Tournament. Ah, nice. Okay, so you brought some photos. Yes. So we're going to look at uh, Dr. Wendy Smith's photos from her trip to Italy, and those are going to be posted up. You're going to take, okay, so is this, what is this? Who are you waving at? Is Beckham in the, yeah. in the stadium? <laughs> do you see okay, him there? Okay, so first of all, girls don't play soccer in Italy. Very oh. few girls play soccer in Italy, so we are waving at the stands at uh, one of our, I think it was our first game or second game, and there are a few spectators, but it's a rare thing to see women playing soccer. Huh. So, but there were a couple guys there cheering us on. So who are you playing? Um, like what's the other team that you're playing? The other team there, I believe, uh, I can't there are 17 of the 20 teams in our age division, yeah. which was over 40, mm -hmm. were from Canada. Okay, so we're going to go yeah. to the next photo. What do we have here? Ooh. Okay, so this is our team, and this is at the opening ceremonies. So they have a big parade mm -hmm. where they all march up from one piazza to the next, and it was super, super hot, but lots of fun, and, and a lot of people in the tournament was held in Torino, Okay. and a lot of people came out and were lining the sides, nice. and it was great. It was great. I like lots the red hat. What else? Let's show up another photo. All right. Um, <clears throat> let's see. What are you doing in this photo? Okay. So one of the girls on our team, um, Carolyn mm -hmm. Lucas, she does yoga. She's a yoga instructor. So this is, we had games almost every day, mm -hmm. but on the days we didn't, we would do workouts, we would do yoga. Do you do any uh, weightlifting or strength training at all? I do a bit. A bit, but yeah. mostly yoga. I'm asking because I was reading an article of David, David Beckham. I mean, he's such an iconic player, yes. and he's such a sexy man. Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> but David Beckham was saying at one point um, he, he lifted weights, but he had to stop it because he couldn't run on the field as fast. 
Oh, it depends. Yeah, I don't know how much weight he was lifting, but yeah, there's a matter of it's got to be explosive power and agility. It, it's there, and if you're too bulky, you're going to lose that. Yeah. Right. So depending on, on how that. he was lifting, right. his All right. Wait, do we have another photo? Let's put. Oh, here we go. How, how okay. is this related to health, Wendy? <laughs> okay, so you have to have some damn time. Uh, so this is before the opening ceremonies, and we're just waiting for it to start. So we're just having a drink and relaxing. Just having a drink. Just having okay. some fun, social bit. <laughs> so that's an interesting photo. <laughs> there's actually, I don't know if you know this, but in alcohol, there's actually um, congeners in alcohol, which give the drink the color and the flavor. And the more congeners, the darker the drink, and the worse your hangover. <laughs> so according to the... You see, I had to follow yeah, water. Yeah, okay. so, <laughs> actually, according to the British Medical Journal, the severity of hangover symptoms decrease in this order. Brandy, red wine, uh, rum, whiskey, white wine, gin, vodka, and pure ethanol. Oh, and yes, please don't pure take <laughs> please don't take non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications well, when you drink it. <laughs> because that'll damage your liver. Okay, so in that photo, it looked like you were socializing a lot. Right. Yes. So that's again. It was about we were doing some shopping before mm -hmm. the uh, the parade, and we're just waiting. So we're just socializing, just having a beer, and yeah. I was having water, like I said. <laughs> There's um, a, a, actually a research article um, in Psych Central, which is a database of articles, and it was called Psychosocial Benefits of Soccer. And soccer actually helps women to create we stories. So what's the level of social capital gain, I guess, that you experience being on the team and, and being with all these women? And I think it's huge. For me, it yeah. was, it's been huge my whole life. Like I remember even as a teenager, that was my identity. Mm -hmm. That was my group of people, my peers, my friends. We did everything together. So now being older like I stopped playing for about 10 years when I had my kids and then started when I moved back down to the um, Oakville area started playing again mm -hmm. and yeah it's the way I met people and it's the way you know it's helping me build my network of you know patients etc as well sure. so yeah no it's huge huge yeah. when you um, you mentioned kids and when you look at the literature on kids that kids in sports and kids who play sports um, compared to kids who don't the kids who do exhibit uh, higher grades actually yes. yep. um, higher self-esteem better interaction with their parents mm -hmm. um, they actually want to volunteer more um, and they have a reduced risk of engaging in the wrong types of behavior. Right. <laughs> um, so playing sports for kids is actually is is very important. Very important. Yeah. Um, but back to David Beckham. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> you sure you didn't see him? <laughs> okay, so David Beckham in, in a Men's Health uh, magazine that I was reading an article, when he was 13, his teacher said to him, you're never going to play. I guess f they call it football over there, right? Yes. So you're never going to play because you're too, you're too small, you're not strong enough. And in the article it says, you know, here's a teacher is supposed to guide our youth with you know inspiration <laughs> but anyways David Beckham took that negativity and criticism and used it as fuel for, for the fire to sh prove that he could actually play so uh, my question to you would be what advice would you give to young girls who want to play but maybe feel a little intimidated just do it just do it <laughs> Again, I think it depends, like if you can find the right environment, mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have to be competitive, it can be recreation. So I mean there's, there's a lot of leagues out there at various levels, so it depends what someone's looking for. Mm -hmm. um, we were playing three times a week, which is a lot when you have kids and work and I'm in school too, so, but for a student, like a younger kid, they usually once a week, sometimes twice a week is all that's re um, yeah. required. Yeah. Um, he's also, Dave Beckham's big on teamwork. He says, you know, um, it's you and it's the team that mm -hmm. wins, not mm -hmm. you. It's like you have an assignment. It's either, you know, block this guy or run that way. He says, yep. so what are you doing? Are you looking at the scoreboard or are you drinking your water? He says, in any competitive endeavor, if you want to be successful, it comes down to the, well, he says, the man in the mirror, but we'll say the woman in the mirror and the assignment. So talk to me about teamwork. Well, you're right. Everybody has a role yeah. and everybody has to understand that you do have a role so and sometimes you have to step away and and make a decision or not do something or do something because it's better for the the we instead of the I mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. so but I think and that's how it works and I I was really lucky to play on this team it was amazing to go away with 20 women mm -hmm. I mean you can think of the dynamics they were all fantastic I mean I could have gone off with anyone shopped or yeah, I had conversations, had a drink. I mean, it was a fantastic experience from that team, mm -hmm. which I don't know 
if that's common for all the teams that were there, but for ours, it was it was a great experience. Well, nice, yeah. nice. So well, you're on and off the field. You're a lovely person, so I couldn't imagine you. you know <laughs> you not having a good time anywhere you go. What's the one thing that you really like about soccer? Uh, do you ever score? <laughs> I do, I do. Um, I'm not a, I'm not I'm not a glory. But I'm a, I, I get put on set play, so I yeah. take free kicks and stuff, so I score then. Um, when, yeah, it's just, when it's just you against the yeah. goalie, that's when you score? But no, when it's like a set play, so it's, it's a free kick. Oh, okay. It's a free kick and it's, yeah, the placement, I can do that. But yeah, on the field, yeah, I mean, I do score a lot more when I was younger, but uh -huh. yeah, I'm getting better. It's You're, taken me a while to <laughs> get back into it. <laughs> what, just in terms of your own body, your own psychology, how does soccer benefit you health-wise? It's a release. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. It's a release. Um, when I have a good game, I feel fantastic. When I, when I know I haven't played as well as I could, it's, it's not as fantastic. But you still, at least you got out and you got some exercise. And it's true. Like, I mean, you sweat. You, in Italy, we sweat a ton. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, it's, it's a release. It's, it's everything, though, because it's not just endurance. It's speed. It's power. It's jumping. It's, it's running sideways. It's diving it's yeah it's you have a caller we have a jason on the phone hi jason how you doing good how are you good good how can we help you look i have a quick question for the chiropractor sure um i've been experiencing some type of lower back pain <laughs> for about two and a half years and it seems to be localized within just under the uh, lower backbone into like the buttock area but i it's not sci sciatica i know that for a fact i'm just wondering do you have any idea what it could be or any special tests I should go for just to see what it could be? We actually, I think, only have one minute left. Is that right, Todd? I think I, think I would recommend... We have, about 30, we have about 30 seconds left. Jason, I'm going to ask you to, to please call Wendy directly, and she can advise you um, in more detail on the telephone. Thank you for your phone call. Wendy, last-minute tips for viewers at home who want to get into good health. What would you say to them? I would say start off, like, like Kim said, start off small, Yeah. go for a walk, five, ten minutes, start getting into a routine, um, and then get out in nature, do something that's relaxing as well, like meditation, or just having time out for yourself, do that, start with that, mm -hmm. something simple that's easy to do anywhere, Nice. and then carry on from carry there. Carry on from there. Thank you very much, Dr. Thank Wendy you. Smith. We'll be back more on Health Matters and a look at what people do for good health. Stick around. Worried about heart disease, being active boosts high density lipoprotein and decreases unhealthy triglycerides. This one-two punch keeps your blood flowing smoothly, decreasing your risk of cardiovascular disease, the Mayo Clinic. Welcome back to Health Matters. I'm asking my guests what they do for good health. With me now is a medical exercise specialist, Osteoporosis Canada speaker, and a bone fit educator. Please welcome Joanne James, CEO of MedFit Rehab. Welcome, Joanne. Thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure. You're welcome. Tell us one thing you do for your health. Well, what I did is I created a, a little fun type of activity for myself. I love working with people with bones, and mm -hmm. it means something to help people strengthen their bones. But at the same time, I like to have a little fun and relax. So I kind of took up something which is uh, hip hop dancing. Nice. It's something different, totally unrelated to really what I do, and it feels good, and I feel like a little star when I'm doing it. Where did you take up hip hop dancing? Well, what I did was I hired uh, a hip hop instructor okay. to come to my studio. So when nobody's around, myself and the hip hop instructor, we, we go to it. Now sometimes I bring some friends along with me, yeah. but it's really kind of for me. Nice, yeah. nice. And so what does that do for your health? Well, it takes me to a different place. Um, mm -hmm. I think we all have a little bit of an entertainer in ourselves. So I like to pretend like I'm like a hip hop dancer. And I love music and I love some of the music, not all of it. But the stuff that I do like, the hip hop uh, <coughs> instructor will actually choreograph some small mini routines that I can pick up. Because I mean, I'm not the best dancer, mm -hmm. but I, I just try to have so much fun. It's like a spiritual little thing for me. Nice. I also understand that you do something called 
Bonalicious. Yeah. <laughs> what is Bonalicious? Well, Bonalicious is a osteoporosis program. Okay. Um, it's designed for women who've been diagnosed with osteoporosis, mm -hmm. but it can also be used for the prevention of mm -hmm. osteoporosis as well. So I created um, a series of movements um, that involve a little bit of impact, uh, weight bearing, strength training, flexibility, balance prevention, mm -hmm. uh, those types of activities in a sort of a fun educational way so that people don't feel like they're just lifting weights or they're just kind of walking around and doing things. So it's highly educational, but highly active, and it's fun. Um, according to Health Canada, one in four women and one in eight men over the age of 50 experience osteoporosis. Why right. do you think women um, are more prone to osteoporosis than men? Well, they have a smaller muscle mass, mm -hmm. um, smaller bones, um, also Depending on what their eating lifestyle was when they were young and growing up, women are always trying to lose weight, mm -hmm. especially in the teen years. Somehow they, they get this feeling that they're overweight. Well, it seems to be an issue now, but in the past it wasn't. Mm -hmm. So they don't eat correctly. And the teen years is the most important years for bone development. And if a child or a teenager does not have their bones uh, or doesn't eat properly to reinforce the bones and exercise, then they will go into their adulthood behind. So um, part of it is, as women, we don't eat correctly and we don't exercise as we should mm -hmm. in order to keep those bones strong. And I would imagine women going through menopause because estrogen helps to keep bones healthy. Right. And so with the drop in estrogen, right. um, you're more at risk. Well, you're at a much greater risk if you didn't do well when you were a teenager and a child eating or you had an eating, uh, yeah. eating uh, dis issue where you uh, were either anorexic or bulimic. Well, that's usually during the most crucial time of bone development. Mm -hmm. And then you go into young adulthood and you start to lose bone around 30. And then when you get to menopause, as you said, you lose mm -hmm. estrogen plus other hormones. And then you're really um, sort of in a pickle mm -hmm. at that point. Yeah. Um, just, yeah, just what you're saying, the Mayo Clinic says the, the higher your peak bone mass at the age of 30, the more bone you have in the bank, so to speak. Exactly. And so you're, so you're less likely to develop osteoporosis. Do you absolutely. agree with that? Oh, absolutely. And this is why I, I believe you had somebody on who um, does soccer. Mm -hmm. And soccer, uh, through some studies, mm -hmm. has been uh, indicated as one of the best activities for mm -hmm. a child to do. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there's a lot of movements. There's impact. There's directional change. There's running. Um, and I guess when they're training, they lift weights. So there's so many different movements in, in, in soccer that it's a great way for children to reinforce their bones. They only have to do it for three, four years. Mm -hmm. It's not like they have to do it for the rest of their lives. Yeah, yeah. There was a, you're right. There was actually a study in Denmark. Uh, women who played soccer for, I think it was 14 weeks, mm -hmm. um, experienced a 3% of uh, a bone, bone gain, right. really, bone density gain. And that reversed up to six years of bone loss because exactly. of all the running, the jumping, yes. and the kicking with soccer. So it really helps. So why the focus on bones for you? You know, I met a woman many years ago that really, it shocked me. Um, she was so bent over. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, you know, I was in, in the fitness industry, but I'd never encountered that before. And for her, nobody had told her about proper eating. She wasn't aware of physical activity. Her doctors had not given her or had not recommended a bone density uh, s scan, um, even when she was 50, 55, 60. And as a result, she was paying a very, very high price mm -hmm. for not having, having not taken care of her bones. And I really felt badly for her because osteoporosis can be prevented. And there are things that you can do, you can show your children to do, making sure they eat and that they exercise uh, appropriately. But all through your life, you can be eating properly, exercising, and you can avoid a lot of those problems. It's a very, very horrible disease if you get it and you don't take care of your bones. We have some photos that you brought, mm -hmm. so we're going to throw up those photos sure. and you can talk to us about it. Um, I think there's actually a photo with you on a ball. Oh, you're holding the ball. Well, I'm holding the okay. ball. Okay. What are we doing in this photo? Well, here, um, the second, my other leg was going to go up, but it's more <laughs> for, for balance okay. um, and for core strength. Mm -hmm. And so we encourage that in the training that we do. We, work, we do it with stability <coughs> balls because it's a way of maintaining or practicing balance and um, increasing strength and endurance. Okay, and then we have another photo. 
We like to encourage a lot of flexibility. So this is uh, a flexibility exercise that somebody who has osteoporosis could do. There are certain movements that if you have osteoporosis when you're exercising, you should be very careful of not doing. Mm -hmm. And then there are exercises that you need to do to help to reinforce your bone. So we like to do the flexibility type activities which you see there, just sure. to improve flexibility. So what are some of the causes of osteoporosis? Well, poor nutrition mm -hmm. during the bone building years, um, up to 18 for women and about 20 to 23 for men. Mm -hmm. That's when they have the most or the best opportunity to reinforce their bones. Lack of activity, the bones need stimulation. They need a little bit of impact to be stimulated to actually build or to grow. Um, sometimes people have been exposed to medications that um, actually leach the bone of calcium. So, for instance, if they've had cancer, they've got a thyroid problem, um, they've had a cardiovascular event, uh, so they've had some sort of a heart attack. A lot of these activities or a lot of these health issues require medications that actually really uh, impact on the bone in a very negative way. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, there's a gentleman called Michael Kinnett, he's a mo molecular biologist. Okay. And he says, so when we eat something, some of that turns to fuel that the body uses, mm -hmm. and the rest is metabolic waste acid. So our body takes minerals from our blood, like, uh, right. like potassium, calcium, sodium, magnesium, to neutralize that acid. And the more acid foods we eat, the more our body has to take those minerals from the blood right. to neutralize that right. acid. And studies show when we hit 40, our body's ability to take those minerals to mm -hmm. neutralize that acid substantially Drop. declines. Um, and then, so what happens is the body starts taking the minerals, calcium from our brain, our bones, and our tissues, and then, you know, we go hunchback, we lose our memory, That's we have right. all types of problems, mm -hmm. and then eventually um, what happens is the, bo um, the body tries to push out the acid mm -hmm. from, from the bloodstream, so it turns the liquid acid into a solid and pushes it in our joints, and we have arthritis. So my question to you would be, what is an osteoporosis diet? What does it look like? Wow. Well, an osteoporosis diet actually minimizes it. it first of all, it should be moderate. Mm -hmm. um, it shouldn't be really an extreme. Uh, an osteoporosis diet should focus on a lot of fruits and vegetables because they carry our, our calcium and it carries all of the um, minerals and vitamins that our bones require. Um, our osteoporosis diet should really minimize the amount of caffeine coffee, to some degree green tea mm -hmm. um, that we consume, uh, junk foods like pop, um, white flour type foods, um, foods that are high and uh, highly acidic uh, encouraging. So it's, there's a lot and, and the problem is a lot of people have varying uh, eating habits, they have varying eating problems, um, they have poor digestion, so that all impacts on what a good osteoporotic diet would be for someone. Mm -hmm. The American Council of Exercises to walk 10,000 steps a day, 10,000 steps a day is 500 calories in a week, that's 3,500 calories, that's one pound of fat loss, week, yeah. and in a whole month you could lose four to five pounds. Do you mm -hmm. agree we should be walking 10,000 steps a day, Joanne? <laughs> uh, we should be walking as much as we can. Now, can everybody walk 10,000 steps? Some people don't have the body, the joints, the muscles to be able to do that, they're weak or they're not strong enough but they should be trying to walk and if you have osteoporosis it is one way yeah. of trying to improve your bones. Thank you very much Joanne James for joining us here in the studio on Health Matters. We'll be back more on Health Matters and a look at what people do for good health. Need an emotional lift? A workout at the gym or a brisk 30 minute walk can help. Physical activity stimulates various brain chemicals that may leave you feeling happier and more relaxed. The Mayo Clinic. Welcome back to Health Matters. We are talking about what people do to be healthy. I'm joined with chiropractor Dr. Nancy Krennic from segment number one. Welcome back. Thank you. So, so far we've heard from a rock star, two chiropractors, not including yourself, and a medical exercise uh, specialist about what they do. To How exciting, yes. Yeah, it's very exciting. So what do you do? 
So, well, I have a family, yeah. so um, it's a little bit different. I'm not traveling all over the world at this point in time, but um, what I do is really, like, it's about really maintaining a healthy lifestyle. It, it really is about lifestyle for us, and, and what we do is try and achieve balance, and obviously we get our spines checked mm -hmm. on a regular basis, making sure that we're subluxation-free to allow our fullest expression of life and of health. Uh, we drink plenty of alkaline or good alkaline uh, water, so we keep ourselves hydrated on a regular basis. We exercise and keep active both individually and as a family, so we really treat, keep active. And we, we really try and eat as clean as possible, eating mostly organic, um, lots of fruits and, fruits and vegetables, uh, good proteins, good meats, that kind of stuff. Um, like really trying to just build on ourselves, build on our health, build ourselves healthy, and keep away from chemicals and toxins and that kind of stuff as much as possible. Obviously. Mm -hmm. Nice. So I'm going to bring up something. Uh, Dr. Zoltan Rona, who writes for Vitality Magazine, he mm -hmm. wrote an article this month um, stating that Dr. Oz went to go see Pierce Morgan on mm -hmm. CNN and gave him a flu shot. And days later, Pierce developed flu-like symptoms such as a cough and hoarseness. And Dr. Zoltan says in this article that it's not uncommon for people to develop flu-like symptoms from the flu shot. He sees a lot of this happening in his mm -hmm. clinic. Now, I know you personally, and I know you don't vaccinate your mm -hmm. children. So mm -hmm. speak more to that. Um, I really, you know, I, I think we're over medicated as a society and I really think we're over vaccinated as a society and I, I really believe that health comes from within. It doesn't come from a pill, potion or lotion or an injection. Um, so we, you know, we, I, I don't vaccinate my, my kids and that's a choice that we've actually made. Um, and that's mainly because I believe, I, I agree actually with Dr. Vera Sch Schreiber, which who states that um, these childhood diseases and infectious diseases, we shouldn't be so afraid of our children contracting them, um, mainly because these diseases, their main goal and their mm -hmm. purpose is to uh, actually mature and prime our children's nervous systems and their immune systems actually. So I really believe that um, our bodies really know what to do and how to protect themselves if given the opportunity Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's pretty much what I how, did, how does your child go to school without being vaccinated? Uh, okay, well, our, our son just actually attended school in September, and um, we just had to get a form filled out. And these forms are available on um, at the National Vaccine Information Centers. That's www. Uh, nvic.com it's a world of information and the forms are available on on the on that website mm -hmm. um, and it basically we just got exempt because of our religious beliefs interesting mm -hmm. interesting so yeah. it's a misconception that people should get vaccinated from your yes, perspective yes yeah. yes um, I, like it's not man it is mandatory they try to make it mandatory if you're allergic to some of the toxic ingredients yeah obviously you can't get vaccinated as well so that's another way nice thank you dr. Nancy Krennic for thank joining you. us tonight as a final note I'll leave you with a quote with doc from dr. Deepak Chopra he says the way you think the way you eat and the way you behave can affect your life and your health up to 50 years have a terrific evening I'll see you next week on health matters <laughs>